chapter 1, Mishnah 3. The previous two Mishnahs discussed who can make an Erech vow, who can be the subject of one, and who can make a vow for actual value. All the people listed in those Mishnahs, however, can be the subject of a vow for actual value. The Mishnah now lists people who cannot be the subject of a vow for actual value. A person who is close to death, and a person who is going out to be executed by a Jewish court, cannot be the subject of a vow for actual value because he no longer has any actual value. And he also cannot be the subject of an Erech vow because he cannot stand before a Kohen to have his Erech determined. determined. The next Tanak disagrees with the ruling about a person about to be executed. Rabbi Hanina ben Akavya says, a person who is going out to be executed can be the subject of an Erech vow made by someone else because his value is fixed by the Torah based on his age and gender, not on his actual market value. But he cannot be the subject of a vow for his actual value. Because unlike an Erech vow, its price is not fixed by the Torah. Since no one would spend money to buy someone about to be executed as a slave, he is considered to have no market value. But his Erech value is not based on what people would pay for him, but on the price set for him by the Torah. Therefore, he can be the subject of an Erech vow. The previous two Tanayim discussed whether a person who is dying or being taken out to be executed can be the subject of an Erech vow or a vow for actual value. The next Tanayim discusses whether he can make such vows. Rabbi Yossi said he, the dying person, or the person about to be executed, can make a vow to pay another person's actual value, and he can make an erech vow to pay someone else's erech, and he can consecrate something that he owns even though he is about to die. Since these vows take effect as soon as a person makes them, he can make them as long as he is alive. And if he damages another person's property, he is obligated to pay for the damages, and they are collected from his estate. The Tanakama, however, disagrees with the last part of Rabbi Yossi's ruling. According to the Tanakama, damages cannot be collected from the estate of these people once they have died.